Okay, so today we welcome uh, Professor Agostino Portera, full professor of intercultural education at the University of Verona, head of the Center for Intercultural Study at the University of Verona in Italy, and director of the master's program in intercultural competence and management. Welcome to Professor Agostino Portera to Global Citizenship Education interview series. Thank you, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So to begin with, um, I'd like to ask you a straightforward question. What is global citizenship and what is global citizenship education in your opinion? In my opinion, global citizenship remains to a concept which is very much related to the situation. Today, the world, uh, I mean, we know many keywords like uh, interconnectedness, globalization, interdependent, uh, I would say today the world became smaller and smaller. Uh, we are all mm. living, uh, we are all related and uh, all uh, human beings are related. So to be global citizenship, uh, in my opinion, is to, to be aware of this intercontinent, of this uh, um, relation that uh, there are right. between human beings. Right. And uh, global citizenship education, of course, became more and more relevant and pregnant, uh, important because uh, we cannot more educate just the nationalistic or right. just local. We need both. Uh, please, if I may, I can remain the philosopher Derrida. Derrida introduced a keyword which I like very much, and this local. Global. We need to be global. Yeah, we need yeah. to be local because we do need to have a particular identity. This is my opinion. But we are more related to a language, to a religion, to some values, to some behavior. But in the main times, we mm. are citizens of the world. We yeah. need to be connected with all of the world. And that's very interesting. And it ties uh, to uh, my second question. What knowledge and values are students expected to acquire through global citizenship education, in your opinion? Well, I think the students need, need uh, many, I would say, additional value and some different value than before. Words like uh, patriotism, for example, or they, they need to be um, confronted. You know? and, uh, what students need today is, uh, besides the local identity, as I said, uh, they need to try to knowledge to become to, uh, to know about the differences, different languages, uh, religion, and uh, way of living. And the second point is respect, in my opinion, because mm. in the past we have lots of experience of uh, this encounter, of course, uh, was very often also in the past, but it was of a hierarchical level. It was through oppression, it was through wars. You know? And today we have the chance through democracy to meet each other on the same level. And this is important to respect every culture, to respect every human being. Right, right, right. So in, in your opinion, what are uh, two or three essential values and knowledge that uh, uh, students are expected to acquire through a global citizenship education based on your teachings, based on your experiences? Well, I think first of all, the knowledge of the diversity, the knowledge that there is not just one language, one religion, one way of living in the world. Mm. So this is very mm. important. Mm. Uh, the second is the opportunity of interaction. Interaction right. is a very important word because it's action and action and goes beyond respect. Of course, respect is very, very important if they are different. It's much better than uh, and try to oppress or making war. But yeah. uh, interact uh, added also the opportunity of changing. So if I disagree with uh, somebody else, perhaps in some culture they do using violence against children, against women or homosexual. So it's important uh, to try to change their opinion. So. I see. So diversity, respect, uh, these are key uh, elements, in your opinion, when we're talking about uh, global citizenship education? 
Right, right. But this is a key element. So you're very right. But I would say this is the basis. This is a, we should try to go beyond just knowledge and respecting. Mm -hmm. We should try. We have in, in Latin a very important word, which is convincere. Convincere is win mm -hmm. together, win win. So if right. we disagree with somebody else, it's important to try to try to change that opinion, but not to force as it was in the past, but mm. to treat in dialogue, to treat in interaction. Very interesting, very interesting. But on the meantime, perhaps the other person can convince who so we should be able also to change our opinion or identity or our way of being because nobody is perfect in this mm. world. And nobody should treat other people as inferior. We are all right. human beings. Right. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Very interesting. All right. Let me ask you this question. You published extensively uh, on the topic of intercultural, multicultural education. How intercultural and multicultural education and global citizenship are interconnected, in your opinion? Yeah, thank you. This is a very key question. And uh, it's much related to what I say. So the multicultural concept, in my opinion, because they're all over the world, they are very different uh, ways of uh, interpreting the concept. Multicultural in Latin, multi means many. And multicultural is based on the awareness that we are different. There are many kind of being in this, uh, in this world. There are many ways of life. And multicultural is related also with respect because it was important mm. in the US with the civil rights movement to respect diversity, to have the rights to be diverse and to be respected as diverse in religion and so on. And, uh, and there is another concept that we did mention. And this is the transcultural concept, which is much related with a global concept. Mm -hmm. Global means uh, in, in, to be together, to be connected, universal. This is philosophical root mm -hmm. is universalism, which is we are all human beings. The intercultural approach goes beyond that. It goes one step in my opinion, forwards, because it's taken into mm. consideration the common humanities, yeah. so the communities between the human beings, and in the main times, the, the differences, so that right. we are different. And on top of that, add the opportunity of encounter, real encounter, authentic encounter of dialogue and of interaction. So yeah. the opportunity of changing if something is not so good or perhaps is wrong. Interesting, interesting. It would be also interesting to know uh, your experiences uh, as the head of the Center for Intercultural Study of the University of Verona in Italy. Uh, you do a lot of research, uh, particularly focus on uh, intercultural education. Would you like to share with our viewers uh, some of your experiences and the research you're doing at the Center? Yes, thank you. We do, uh, as you said, we do in the Center of Intercultural Studies many research. I would say in different area. One of the area is, uh, for example, cooperative learning. This was very important in the classroom. How can we promote uh, so group working and being together? Then another field is uh, intercultural competences, as you said, because it is important and necessary today, not all uh, talking theoretic, what is intercultural or multicultural education, instead to try to promote the concrete, the people who are working in practice then in this field, and the competence today are essential and everybody right. recognized. Also in citizenship education, we did some research. Right. What, what is the core mission of uh, the Center for Intercultural Studies at uh, the University of Verona? I mean, what, what are the areas uh, of uh, major focus? So what kind of uh, uh, recent and less recent, if you wish, research project did you advance? Yes, uh, the research, uh, as I said, they are in different areas. We have the area of immigration. So to see how is the mm. situation of immigrant people, this area of journalism and communication 
Sure. This means the field of intercultural communication, stereotypes, prejudice, right. the newspaper, interview. Then the, uh, the area of didactics or the pedagogy of intercultural education. And then the area of working. I mean, counseling, mediation, conflict resolution. And, right. uh, 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 yeah. and what is a, a recent or a less recent research project that uh, you advance at the center? Anything you like to share with our viewers that is particularly important to you? Uh, yeah, I would say one of the most, uh, I would say most important results and we did is uh, to try to understand the intercultural competences needed but in different area. We didn't make a difference between education and other, other fields. We do uh, um, think that uh, competences and intercultural competence are necessary in many fields. So we did an, a, a research in uh, juristic, in, uh, in the economic field, in the school, and also in the mediation to, um, to find out the most important competences that such operators need. I see. Very interesting. And also, you are directing a, a master's program in intercultural competencies and management. What is the main focus of the master's programs? And if you wish, uh, you perhaps want to uh, share with our viewers some experiences from the master's program. Yes. The, uh, first of all, the master's program is also open to many professions. Uh, not just uh, for your teachers, but also for your lawyer, for medicines, uh, so medical doctor, other care, for the business people. And uh, we try to work in the, mainly in the conflict resolution. So we started with a very, very small theoretic background, and right. then we go in the, um, in the mediation and in the conflict resolution. I do think that today is a special need of uh, handling with conflict, of recognizing mm. conflict, and also handling appropriately with conflicts. And this is, uh, I would say, the best experience because the group is a, a multicultural group. They are from different parts of the world, from different profession. And it's so interesting to see how they, they cope, how they face different conflicts and how they learn through mediation and some conflict resolution skills. Perhaps we can uh, add a link uh, to your master's programs in the description um, uh, in, um, below this interview. So uh, who is interested can access and take a look at your yeah, master's program. Thank you. And uh, as a result of your master's in intercultural competencies and management, you also published a book, Intercultural Mediation Counseling and Psychotherapy in Europe in 2020. Uh, this is published by Cambridge Scholars. Would you like to share with our viewers uh, what is the core message of, of this book and, and why is so important for the field? Yes, the core message is that today we, do, we need not just theory, but we need mainly praxis uh, advice. We need some praxis indication uh, so in many fields. So in the core is the point of conflict resolution mm -hmm. and through conflict resolution, the most important issue are counseling mm -hmm. and mediation, most of all mediation. So the master is focused on mediation and this book is very much focused on mediation, intercultural mediation. Of course. Because as you were mentioning before, counseling is one of the core focus of the of your masters. So that that is yes. an element that is also important in, in your uh, most uh, recent one of your most recent uh, publications and book. Okay, that's that's very interesting. Would you like to add any other element related to the book? Otherwise, I have a very interesting and challenging question for you. To conclude our interview. Okay, let's conclude. Let's go with uh, let's go with the challenging. So, um, all uh, our guests here at Global Citizenship Interview uh, Series are asked this uh, this question, and so I will share this question with you as well. Uh, how would you define uh, global citizenship education using uh, three key words. Today in, in our interview, we discussed uh, global citizenship, we discussed intercultural education, multicultural education. Of course, we uh, 
um, uh, discussed uh, your work at the center, um, at the University of Verona in Italy, as well as your master's degree and your most recent publication, putting together all this element and uh, uh, trying to connect this with the uh, uh, very focus of this interview series, which is, as I said, on global citizenship education, what kind of keywords, two or three, um, would you like to share with, with our viewers? How would you define global citizenship? Yeah, yeah, I would say it's difficult to choose just three, but I would say dialogue, mm. which means, uh, if I may, can explain communication, communication mm -hmm. skill are very, very important. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, the second I would say is uh, justice, which uh, justice, mm. I don't mean just uh, abstract word, but uh, equity and not equality, equity. We should equity. have the right to be different, but should be treated as equal. And the truth, uh, it's, it's different, but I, I would say respect. I would choose respect, which respect. is much more than tolerance. Respect is more on the, on the same way. A level, huh? and this is bilateral, intercultural. Respect. So dialogue, justice, and respect. These are, in your opinion, the three keywords connected with the notion, or should be the three keywords connected with global citizenship. Okay, okay, very, very interesting, very interesting. All right, so we really, really uh, say thank you to Professor Agostino Portera uh, from the University of Verona in Italy. It was a pleasure. Uh, to discuss with you uh, notions of global citizenship, intercultural education, multicultural education, and to learn from your precious work um, as a great uh, Italian intellectual. Thank you very much for joining the interview series. Yeah, thank you, Emiliano, for having me. It's, it was also a great honor and pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much. Thank you.